We have some wonderful speakers lined up for you today, and we want you to know that you are in the right place. My name is Eva Locke. I am the Job Center Supervisor for the Job Center of Lake County. A few housekeeping items for you. We've covered these. You will be on mute during the presentation. Type your comments or questions in the chat. After this presentation, our coordinator and the person who's running this slideshow, Rasan Grant, will share a package, including a PDF copy of this presentation and pertinent resources with you. So you don't have to take notes. You can sit back, sip your tea or coffee on this cold, blustery day and enjoy hearing from some wonderful speakers. This is our second annual, you are, you can, the next slide's fine. This is our second annual, You Are Not Alone workshop. Um, and we want you to know that this is the brainchild of several partners, including the Department of Human Services, Division of Rehab Services, and the other organizations that you'll be hearing from here today. We want to leave you with the message that you truly are not alone. In the Chicagoland area alone, there are over 800,000 individuals who have disabilities, and there are some wonderful resources for you. You'll hear about these resources today, and my hope is that you'll leave feeling encouraged and uplifted. We are with you. I'm now going to turn this over to our first speaker, Dr. Daryl Rader. He is the manager of the Division of Rehabilitation Services Office here in Waukegan. Dr. Rader has fully supported offering integrated services through the Job Center partners and community to ensure that those who have a disability truly experience equal opportunity in Lake County. Thanks to him, we are now able to host our second annual You Are Not Alone workshop. Dr. Rader. Hi, good morning, everyone, and I am so glad to be here on this blustery winter day in Illinois. I'm glad that all of you have chose to join us today. Uh, we have some awesome speakers that are going to share with you the intricacies of the path you could utilize our services for toward becoming employed uh, for those of you who are differently abled, and as well as those who are um, blessed with being able just from the beginning of life. My name is Dr. Daryl Rader, and I am the Waukegan Division of Rehab Services uh, Administrator for that office, which services all of Lake County. I wanted to just share with you very quickly uh, in my introduction what we do and how we do it. So the Illinois Department of Human Services Division of Rehabilitation, we focus on assisting with day services, disability determination services, early intervention services, in-home supports, and a combination of other supports as well as residential living arrangements for those who are differently abled. Our agency works in partnership with people who have disabilities in their families to assist them in making informed choices to achieve full community participation through employment, education, and independent living opportunities. The Division of Rehabilitation is a key partner of the Lake County Workforce Development Board and is one of several organizations that participate in the Job Center under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. We commonly refer to that as WIOA. With over 800,000 persons with disabilities that you uh, heard earlier, those that are either uh, differently able through their physical, their hearing, their visual, psychosocial, or in some cases, mobility challenged. The Division of Rehab Services assists with increasing uh, the integrated services that we provide to support those seeking job opportunities for those with such abilities. Uh, Real-time path toward transitioning back into employment for some, and specific methods and a route by which to self-advocate for any accommodation which might be needed by those of the population that we service. We also have a transition program that begins 
working with our school age youth who are in high school uh, from an advantage point of preparing them for the workforce and or continued education opportunities. The Illinois Department of Human Services Division of Rehabilitation assists with those day services that let me just highlight a few during the month of December of 2022 that the Lake County Job Center uh, was able to capture. And that would be in, in toward delivering services to those with disabilities. They had 406 incoming calls just during the month of December that they were able to facilitate and uh, work towards sharing with us to assist in getting those with disabilities employed. They had 307 on-site visitors. That was just at the Lake County Job Center alone. And there were 14 service point partner referrals that were sent uh, to various partner agencies, including the Division of Rehab Services, and a total of 240 unify referrals of those who were seeking assistance and support. The Division of Rehab Services in the entire state of Illinois has 47 offices. And out of those 47, Waukegan is one office, which really is treading, tread, treading or trending on a very high level to meet the needs of those 800 persons that are disabled throughout the state of Illinois that we've been able to identify. I'm hopeful that as we move forward in 2023, we'll be able to provide and possibly increase by doubling our numbers for those who have disabilities and seek to remain employed, get employed, or further their education, skills, and knowledge. And with that said, I'd like to hand the presentation of this workshop back to our job center supervisor, who has just been phenomenal in her support and her ability to help move things forward, Eva Locke. Hi, I want to start you off with a story today because a lot of times um, it's easier to understand the broad array of services through um, a specific story. This is a young man who has worked successfully with both the Division of Rehab Services and Lake County Workforce Development. Shane has loved computers his whole life. Uh, he does have a disability that limits his mobility. Um, so he was seeking a position that where he could work from home. The Division of Rehab Services worked with him to allow him to attain a associate degree in computer support. His vocational specialist then referred him to the Job Center of Lake County, uh, where he was funded for a six month work experience with an IT department with the county. Shane, after much persistence on his part and working with um, Job Center partners, did land a full-time position remote as a service desk analyst for GDC IT Solutions. Um, I hope that encourages you as we begin um, our lineup of speakers. And I'm now going to introduce you to our next speaker, Dina Donahue Chase. Dina is currently the Vice President of Strategy and Innovation with Annexer Center. She has over 15 years experience working in the space of vocational opportunities for those with disabilities. And significant for us, Dina also resides in Lake County and knows our community very well. Dina? Thank you so much for that introduction. It is great to be here today and it is great to talk to with everybody about the opportunities that are there for work. Um, as we know, and I, as I was kind of thinking about this presentation today, which is going to be about positive mindset, I'm reminded that there's really amazing things that can happen, but we have to kind of internalize that and bring that forward. So thrilled to be here today, and let's go ahead and get started. 
So today we're going to be talking about getting ready for work and having a positive mindset. So we're kind of coming out of a time when things have been very uncertain. We weren't really sure what work life was going to look like, what was going to be happening. And the great news, though, is that there's tons of opportunity. The job market is open to all of us. But I think we also know that sometimes when we're going into something new, we're coming back into work, we're starting the job search for the first time, we might have a little bit of uncertainty, some anxiety about it. But one of those things that we can do about really getting excited and ready for it is to be able to frame things from a po- what I call that positive mindset. So let's go ahead and t- kind of walk through what that means. So your mindset is really, it is about what you believe about yourself, and it really plays a very important role in what you want and how you're going to be able to achieve it. It's not just as easy as putting a smile on our face sometimes and being and acting cheery. It's really about creating the place where we have ourselves thinking in a positive way. And I'm going to share some tips on how we can start to put ourselves in the right mindset to get ready for work. It's one of the best things we can do to be successful in our search and for even in our life. So next. So the eight tips we're going to review today is uh, one of my favorites to create a checklist. And we're going to talk about it, that in greater detail when we get to the next set, uh, slide. We're going to set some goals, really putting things one step at a time, maybe doing a daily routine. Think about the great things that you've accomplished, not just at work, but like other achievements you've had. Identify a mentor, somebody who can support you, keep you on track for what you want to do. Perhaps look at being a volunteer somewhere to gain experience or to even put that in part of the routine for going to work. I always like to say, focus on those things though that you can control because we're going to go through the application process and we won't always get a response. We may not always get the response we want, but we need to focus on what we're able to control to keep us positive and moving forward. And then whenever else we're we're doing, we want to make sure we always just sometimes take that step back and be kind to ourselves, recognize what's going, what's going right, because the positive turn is just around the corner. Next slide. So I always like to say tip one, let's create a checklist. What is it that we're looking for in a job? And when I do this, sometimes even when I do it for myself, I go, what am I good at? What job is right, you know, I think I could do, but also what's my dream job? If I could have anything in the world, what would it be? That helps me to start to think and it helps other people start to think about where they're going to go with their work journey. Consider what you want from your employer. I think Shane's story was awesome. He's done some of these things. He wanted to work remote. He understood what he was looking for from his employer. And he had that in his checklist. I also like to even look at like goals that I might have. Um, Do I want to learn how to get better at PowerPoint? Or do I want to have a goal to... um, get better at writing. I mean, everybody has different goals. You put those down. Benefits planning is something to consider as we're going to work. What do I need to think about from my benefits standpoint if I have benefits or if I'm thinking about getting benefits and who can help me with this? Because sometimes this stuff is complex. I think any of us that have worked in in, and trying to use some of the systems to get the supports we need, it can be a little bit hard sometimes. So I always like to see who can help me get there. Um, If there's additional training that I might need, if I've decided that I wanted to do um, some graphic work, maybe I need a training to get me there. So then what will be my next steps? And then 
One of the other things I think about are transportation. Am I gonna use public transportation? Am I gonna use an Uber? And so I have a checklist and it helps me to get a, like my plan in order of what I'm going to be doing next. And I can always go back to it and keep myself on track for what I need to do so that I can keep moving forward. Next slide. Set a goal. Um, and I like to say set small ones. Um, we don't need to set like big, huge goals, but maybe I'm gonna set some goals like that I want to look at three companies and I, or I'm going to apply for two jobs every week or I want to get to more, know more people that can help me get a job. So I will join a group. So I set goals that help me keep myself on track for what I need to do. All of this allows me to feel like I'm, I'm continuing to move forward. These are all really positive things. Another thing I like to do, this is something I do myself because I always want to keep myself in a positive mindset about what I'm doing as I set a routine. Sometimes it, it's like I'm going to get up at a certain time every day, or I'm going to make sure that I build in a walk to my day or a meditation. I got up this morning first thing because I get a little anxious sometimes when I have to speak in front of people or do presentations. And so I meditate for a few minutes just so it gets my mind in the right positive mindset that I could do this. This is something that I'm going to be really good at and I'm going to do it. Um, or like we set with our goals, we're going to do job search activities. It can be whatever you want that gets you into that routine so that you've got that positive step forward. Next slide. I love this one. Uh, you write down your achievements or, or list them out or even with pictures. Um, there's so much that we do. Work is a part of what we do and we've got some great successes from it, but we've all had amazing achievements that we've had and we should recognize those. Um, whether it's like I've taken a great trip somewhere, um, like I've had a wonderful celebration with my family and I organized it recognize those achievements and celebrate those things um, because it's that reminder of that value that we have and how important it is in our personal life as well as in our work life. Tip five is a mentor. A mentor is a person that, well, maybe not a friend, is somebody that you've met in your life, that you've admired. Maybe it's somebody who does that job you're looking for. And you want to ask them to say, can you help me? Can you help me look at my goals and my plans and say, is this going to be able to get me to that job? Your mentor is that person who says there can be a cheerleader for you. And they can also be, maybe you should think about this. They're a good person to bring ideas to or pull back, you know, bring things back, but they help you guide your journey forward. So a mentor is also something you can consider. Next slide. Uh, a volunteer job. Um, there is tremendous need in our community um, for people to volunteer and help out. It's always a good thing that, you know, if it's something you enjoy, you can make connections, you can build it in as part of your routine. Uh, it's something you can put on your resume. Um, so if that's another tip. If that's something that's of interest to you that you would like to do and move forward with. Tip seven, I always say, stay focused. We cannot control everything. There's Lots of people that are still applying for jobs. We're not going to get everyone. We don't want to stay discouraged. Stay focused on what we're able to control. So if there's something going on and we're not getting that interview, maybe we need to do something with our resume. Or if we're getting an interview and maybe things aren't quite going like where we're going to get hired, 
maybe there's some practice we can do, but what you want to do is stay focused on how do I improve? How do I keep moving forward? And what's my next step? And then stay focused on that end goal. And then tip eight is, I just have to say it, you have to be kind to yourself. You have to remember that everything in life is important. Your friends, your family, all of the successes you've had, and that job is just around the corner. And you have support. Everyone on this call, from a personal commitment to what the work that we do, to where they work, and the resources that they have, are here to assist you onto that next step because that job is just around the corner. But what I can say is keeping a positive mind step is one of the best things we can do for that success. I've shared eight tips. You can do one of those tips. You can do six of those tips, or maybe there's a different tip that you found that can keep you in the positive mindset. But I'm confident your success is just around the corner. And I'm so glad that I could be here with you today to see you staking that next step forward in your careers. Thank you. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our next presenters. You see them up on our screen. We have Gianni Serrano, who's a business employment consultant and Elizabeth, who is a vocational rehab counselor or rehabil rehabilitation counselor, I'll use your full, full title. And they are here to share some you know, great information about how to access additional services and supports. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Dina, for that awesome presentation and fabulous introduction. My name is Gianni Serrano, and I am a business employment consultant with the Division of Rehabilitation Services. So just a brief introduction as to what the Illinois Division of Rehabilitation Services is. We are the state's lead agency serving individuals with disabilities and we like to focus on our customers' abilities, not their disabilities. So just to briefly introduce what are, what are some of the workers that you might be working with when you sign up for services with us. So we have rehabilitation counselors. They assist clients or job seekers prepare to enter, retain, or regain competitive and integrated employment. Counselors communicate the resources and options available to assist our customers in making informed choices about their employment goals. We also have rehabilitation case coordinators. Coordinators are the first point of contact when an individual is referred for DRS services. They assist rehab counselors in case management and file organization. We also have business employment consultants. So business employment consultants, such as myself, we partner with employers throughout the state to make sure that businesses have the workforce that they need to keep them competitive, to help them build a more disability inclusive workplace and match their needs to the interests and abilities of our customers. In other words, we work together with the employers and counselors to assist our customers with direct placements, into competitive and integrated employment. Now you may be wondering what is competitive and what is integrated? What type of um, employment scenarios are those? So with competitive, we're talking about at minimum, um, the minimum wage, not anything below. And in regards to integrated, we want to put our customers in work environments where they're working not only with individuals who also have disabilities, but individuals who do not have them. So we want them to be fully integrated. And with the Division of Rehabilitation Services, we like to stress that not all disabilities are visual. So some common hidden disabilities include someone who may have had a stroke, someone with diabetes, heart disease, asthma, allergies. Um, it could be someone with who's recovering from cancer, um, lung or respiratory problems, um, and injury sustained from accidents. 
Next slide, please. So you might be wondering, are employers interested in hiring me? Are there jobs out there right now for a person with a disability? And I'm here to tell you that the answer is yes. People with disabilities are one of the largest minority groups in the country. They are the largest untapped pool of qualified workers. They can succeed in employment with the right opportunities and the right support. They also bring unique skills and talents to the workplace, such as creative problem solving, innovation, resilience, loyalty, and productivity. They help organizations build a strong and diverse pipeline of skilled workers. And they also improve an employer's bottom line. And they do this by reducing recruiting and training costs while increasing retention rates. That being said, employers recognize the value of what people with disabilities bring to organizations. Next slide, please. And so now we're gonna talk about the National Disability Employment Awareness Month. This happens every October. And basically it is a theme that stresses that disability is and always has been part of the rich diversity of our nation. And this past year, this past October's theme was disability, part of the equity equation. And so they're celebrating the essential role that individuals with dis disabilities play in the workplace. And it stresses a commitment to ensure that all workers, including workers with disabilities, have the equal opportunities to gain skills and put them to work in inclusive supportive workplaces. And with that said, we have a very brief video um, that further discusses the National Disability Employment Awareness Month 2022. Please give me a thumbs up if you are able to hear it. Every day, people with disabilities can and do add value to America's workplaces and economy. Each October, during National Disability Employment Awareness Month, or NDEAM, we celebrate the contributions of these workers with disabilities. We also reaffirm our commitment to ensuring all Americans, including Americans with disabilities, can put their skills and talents to work. Reflecting the important role disability plays in workforce diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, the theme for NDEAM 2022 is disability part of the equity equation. Indeed, a disability inclusive workforce is a strong workforce. And today, more and more leading employers across the US are realizing this and reaping clear bottom line benefits as a result. Specifically, companies identified as leaders in disability inclusion had on average over a four year period, 28% higher revenue, double the net income, and 30% higher economic profit margins than their counterparts. NDEAM is an annual opportunity to educate people about these benefits, celebrate progress made, and most importantly, commit to building a stronger, more equitable, and inclusive workforce going forward. It is led by the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy, or ODEP. Each year, ODEP works closely with partner organizations including those representing employers, people with disabilities and their families, and government agencies, to develop a theme and assist organizations in participating. This includes developing and distributing an annual poster. But the real spirit of ending lies at the grassroots level with activities and observances in workplaces and communities across the country. Employers of all sizes and in all industries are encouraged to take part as are educators and youth service professionals, business associations, labor unions, and disability advocacy organizations. How can your organization take part? There are lots of ways. Visit dol.gov slash for inspiration. There, you'll find concrete ideas for event planning and resources such as newsletter articles, press releases, proclamations, and social media content. 
And while on the site, be sure to order your free Andean poster, which is available in both English and Spanish. The Campaign for Disability Employment also offers a variety of resources that can help in planning Andean activities, including videos and discussion guides. To access them, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. However you choose to participate, Andean is a great time to celebrate and educate. It's a time to reflect and reaffirm. It's a time to emphasize the importance of ensuring all Americans can gain skills and put them to work for the good of themselves, their families, their communities, and our nation's economy. It's a time to recognize that disability is part of the equity equation. Okay, so although it seems like we've been in the pandemic for years now, <laughs> which we have, employers are looking to advance disability inclusion. We're currently in a national recovery from this pandemic. Uh, the pandemic has disrupted traditional structures in the workplace, and employers are rethinking workplace solutions and practices. They're stressing flexibility and being more accommodating to different needs. They're using new technologies and policies um, to accommodate and doing things such as more remote work. There's also an, an evolving workforce or an evolving group of people working that want a corporate culture that emphasizes diversity, inclusion, and social responsibility. Employers with more inclusive disability hiring practices, report 28% higher revenue, double the net income, and 30% higher profit margins. So what does all this mean? This means that if you have been thinking about entering or re-entering the workforce, your time is now. Next slide, please. Thank you. So what DRS resources are available for a job seeker who has a disability? So some of the services that we offer at DRS include job placement, which is where a business service consultant or um, a community resource provider will assist you with job searching and ultimately um, attempting to place you with the employer of your choice based on your qualifications and skills. There's also a service called on-the-job training. This is a paid training where the employer provides training, oversight, shadowing, and mentoring in order for our job seeker to learn the skills that they need to perform that, um, that position. We also offer education services. We can assist with paying for post-secondary or vocational school. So Post-secondary would be college if you're um, looking to get a degree. Vocational would be certain certifications. We also um, provide job coaching services. This is on-site support that help customers adjust to a new workplace and the new job duties. We can also help with assistive technology. That's any item or piece of equipment that's used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. This can include aids for daily living, computer access, hearing aids, and environmental controls. Additional supports include reserved parking, alternative work schedules, extra breaks, working from home, and specific tools or devices. So I kind of wanted to give some examples of the specific tools or devices. And one that we could use, and if you notice, they're all not very expensive, but the first one is if someone has seasonal affective disorder, um, that's also known as seasonal depression, we can purchase something called a circadian optics Luxy lamp. And they would use that during their work shift and it would assist them um, with doing their job more effectively. 
If someone has problems picking up office supplies, possibly due to muscular dystrophy or uh, multiple sclerosis, they can, we can purchase something um, that helps them pick up things, such as the Weller vacuum pickup tool. And if someone has vision problems, and let's say if their position requires them to take measurements, we can purchase something called a talking tape measure to help them take those measurements and still be able to do their job effectively. Another example is if someone has had a stroke and maybe they're, they've, you know, um, have trouble picking things up with their hands and let's say maybe they work in a warehouse where they have to pick up boxes and package things, we can purchase something called the Palm Flex Gloves that can help them grip these things and so that they're able to continue to effectively do their job. I, however, I wanna stress that 56% of supports cost absolutely nothing at all. And if you, if you look at the top where it says additional supports, when we say that these supports cost nothing at all, 56%, we're talking about the reserved parking, alternative work schedules, these extra breaks, um, the accommodation of being able to work from home. These are the majority of supports that customers may need and again, cost nothing at all to employers. Um, however, if someone is in need of those specific tools that we talked about, such as the lamp or the gloves or the talking tape measure, these are supports that DRS can assist with as long as the customer has a diagnosed medical condition and this tool or the support will help the customer in being successful at their chosen vocation. We also have some information down below. We also have some information down below for the job accommodation network. And I do like to include this, um, this resource and, and talk about it very briefly because it is an educational and empower, empowering resource that um, job seekers can use. Um, on this website, it has really good examples or, or scenarios of the different disabilities and how an employer can accommodate that job seeker or that worker. Um, and so it's not only a tool just for job seekers, but for employers as well. Next slide, please. And so now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Elizabeth. Thank you, Deanne. Great information. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what we do in the local office. Um, my name is Beth Eklov. I am the Rehabilitation Case Coordinator or a Rehabilitation Case Coordinator um, at the Waukegan office. Um, we have multiple offices throughout the state. So if you are ever wondering what office would serve you if you live outside of Lake County, um, you could just go to our website and use our office locator and put your county in the search bar and it will show you exactly what local DRS office would serve you. Um, in Lake County, our office is in the Waukegan, or is in Waukegan. Um, we serve customers with documented disabilities. So we have specialized in-service, um, in-office services for individuals with hearing impairments. We have specialized services for people with visual impairments through the Bureau of Blind Services. And we have specialized transition services for individuals with disabilities under the age of 18 through our school, some of our schools in the county. Um, Waukegan DRS has two programs. They have the home services program as well as the vocational rehabilitation program, which is what I work for. Vocational means work and rehabilitation means assistance to get meaningful long-term employment. If you are in need of a job or need help getting a job, please contact us. Anyone should be able to pursue competitive integrated employment. And that's where we come in. Next slide, please. Um, so just a little bit on how to get started with DRS. The first step is to make a referral. Anyone can make a referral. So it can be somebody that you know, one of your family members. It could be an advocate for you. All they have to do is call our office or go to our website. The main information that is needed for a referral is the name, social security number, date of birth, 
address, phone number, disability, and if someone has an email address, we would prefer to have it, but it's not necessarily required. All of the previous information that was mentioned is required for us to start a referral. Next slide, please. Um, and after the referral, you can expect a counselor to reach out to you to make an appointment. The individual seeking services, which would be you, you control the process. The counselors work with our customers to help tailor plans to meet each individual's needs by meeting to discuss individual goals, interests, and abilities, provide options in the community to achieve their goals, and continuously work toward the long-term employment goal. Just know that if a case is closed, you can always make a new referral. Next slide, please. This slide just shows our, um, our resources. Our website is there. Our local DRS number is there. And the Job Accommodation Network Accommodation Evaluations is also there if you need any of that information. And up next, we have Anka Stark, the Community Engagement Manager at Goodwill Great Lakes with the Naval Station Great Lakes in North Chicago, whom I have had the pleasure of meeting a few times. So go ahead, Anka. Well, thank you for having me today. I am honored to be on this presentation uh, with such great speakers and partners. My role is to work collaboratively with partners to help people with disabilities overcome barriers to a full spectrum of employment opportunities. Together, we make a collective impact by increasing awareness about the valuable and unique skill sets people with disabilities bring to the workplace. Goodwill Great Lakes at Naval Station Great Lakes elevates communities by providing training, competitive employment, and opportunities for advancement for all of our employees. In addition, Goodwill offers uh, job seekers with disabilities who may benefit from accommodations such as extended training, including life skills training, available case management services, and American Sign Language interpreters. All of our employees with or without disabilities work together in an integrated workplace setting, which has been explained to you in the previous presentation, um, to provide food service, laundry, postal, logistical services to the US Navy. Next slide, please. Now, the first question you may ask yourself uh, as you're starting your job search, should an applicant discuss a disability with a potential employer? The next question would be, what accommodations may I request? It is an individual choice. Next question. Now the 1990 Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA law makes it illegal for employers to discriminate against qualified job applicants or employees with either mental or physical disabilities. In addition, employers are required to make reasonable accommodations for employees or candidates with disabilities. Next slide, uh, slide, please. As you're starting your journey, you have to look for employers that have a disability friendly environment. So does that employer take a diversity and, and inclusion stance is what you have to ask yourself. For instance, Walgreens states, 
reflecting our founder, Charles R. Walgreens, strong commitment to creating equal opportunity, Walgreens has always hired people with disabilities and striven to foster a fully, I can't see my full slide here, inclusive work environment is what I'm assuming they're saying. Uh, Abbott Laboratories states to the best to be strives to be the best in class network supporting people of all abilities within Abbott to empower people with disabilities to reach their full potential. And at I must state goodwill statement as a social enterprise diversity and inclusion are part of the fabric of goodwill. It stems from our mission, helping people with disabilities or disadvantages find meaningful employment, creating a diverse, inclusive atmosphere for our employees flows from our stated mission. And our mission is to provide training, employment, and supportive services to people with disabilities or disadvantages who are seeking greater independence. Next slide, please. Now the types of disabilities would include or, and are not limited to the following, attention deficit disorder, blindness or low vision, brain injuries, deaf and hard of hearing, learning disabilities, medical disabilities, physical disabilities, psychiatric disabilities, speech and language disabilities. Next slide, please. Now you need to ask yourself, will you need accommodations? The first thing you need to do is review the job description before putting in an application to make sure you will be able to do the core responsibilities of your job, which will help you to determine the accommodations you will need to meet the expectations of the job. If you have a visible disability, it may be a good idea to tell the employer before the interview, if you prefer to keep the focus on the interview and your qualifications. Of course, that is an individual choice. Telling the employer the specific accommodations that you need will be helpful and possibly set the employer at ease. Next slide, please. Now, what's a reasonable accommodation? The ADA requires employers to make reasonable accommodations as long as doing so does not cause the employer undue hardship. This includes, but is not limited to, making work facilities accessible, restructuring jobs or modifying work schedules, reassigning individuals to other jobs, acquiring or modifying equipment or devices, modifying examinations, training materials or policies, providing qualified readers or interpreters. Now, let me add to that. It states here, uh, modifying work schedules. However, if the organization is not open on the weekends, and they're not in operation on the weekends and you can only work the weekends, that might become now an unreasonable accommodation due to the cost that that company would incur to open up their operation on a weekend. So it's a case by case basis. Next slide, please. Uh, some uh, reasonable accommodations would be uh, ASL interpreters, for example. Next slide, please. Now, we just talked about someone who has a visible disability, how to approach an employer uh, regarding accommodations. Many people have hidden disabilities making it difficult for job seekers to determine when and if they should disclose their disability. The majority of the people I meet through the AbilityOne program 
have hidden disabilities. So this can make it particularly difficult for them to know when and if during the interview process, they should ask for a reasonable accommodation. Um, again, it's your personal choice and what you feel comfortable with. And again, an invisible uh, disability can be a mental health issue, which is very prevalent right now. Now, before you make your decision, consider if the organization, again, is disability friendly. For example, I gave you examples of organizations that you can be assured that they are disability friendly and they also have goals to hire people with disabilities. So keep that in mind too. Uh, it's not a detriment to have a disability when applying for a job. As a matter of fact, it can help that organization by not only bringing your unique skill sets to that organization and making them more effective, but they have goals, affirmative action goals uh, that they want to meet. So it's not gonna hurt you to have a disability. If it's a disability friendly company, they will welcome you. So feel confident. But um, the next step would be if you cannot perform the duties of the job without reasonable combinations, be upfront about it. I suggest after the offer is made or during the onboarding process. However, again, it is a personal choice as to what point of the interviewing process you feel comfortable disclosing your, uh, your disability. Again, it can all depend on how disability friendly that organization is. But if you do need a reasonable accommodation, do not ask for a reasonable accommodation if you know all along you need one after you started the job or maybe several months after. You can still ask for that but the problem being, if they don't know you need a reasonable accommodation, uh, there can you could be written up and there could be a ramification uh, that takes place because now you're treating, you're being treated as if you never needed that accommodation. So next slide. So now I would like to introduce uh, Wonderful partner, Rasan Grant, Career Resource Specialist, Lake County Workforce Development. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Aka, and thank you for that warm introduction. My name is Rasan Grant, and I'm the Career Resource Specialist here at the Job Center of Lake County. I work in the resource room here at the Job Center, um, assisting customers who visit the Job Center or any of our outreach events, providing essential career resources, which some of those things I'll share with you today. And I apologize, they're just a little stuck here. So just to share some of our services here at the Job Center of Lake County, many of our visitors will visit the Job Center to obtain career assistance. Our job seekers can utilize the public computers that we have here in the resource room to perform self-directed job search. Um, they could also access applications to apply for essential services, such as energy assistance, public assistance, public housing vouchers, or even to access two on one Lake County for additional community resources. Also, they will use our computers here to apply for what we call the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act training grant. This grant provides job seekers with access to employment resources, employment, paid work experience, internships, education, training opportunities, and even supportive services are needed to help meet employer requirements and succeed in the labor market. 
The Job Center also provides information to help individuals learn about education programs that are offered by our partner organizations, such as um, CLC, if a job seeker chooses to go back to school and obtain their GED or high school equivalency, they can do that through CLC or one of our other partner organizations like District 113 and 120 who provide these services. Keep in mind that the Job Center is open between the hours of 8.30 and 4 to use the computers, but we do close um, from 12 to 1 p.m. for lunch. Also, just to share with you as well, the Job Center does provide accommodation services. Accommodations are available at the Job Center. Um, we have such um, devices such as a computer with a large monitor on adjustable table. That computer is 24 inch monitor that gives you more real estate to just view um, the screens and the windows that are on the computer. Also, the job center has a large keyboard with braille on the keys as well. We do have a trackball mouse, which is ergonomic for those with limited hand mobility. Also, we have a closed circuit TV to view enlarged and printed materials as well. It helps to magnify any printed material that is needed. Also, a screen reading software as well. It's titled JAWS, very helpful, and, and interpreting services. But we would ask that if you do need accommodations, feel free to contact us at the Job Center and request um, any type of accommodations that you might need to help you in your job search here at the Job Center. Also, the Job Center offers three core workshops a month. We've been offering these workshops in a hybrid mode. That means you can attend them online or in person. Just this month, we were at the Warren Newport Public Library and we offered those core three workshops in a hybrid format. Typically our workshops are um, on the Zoom platform, so you can sign up for that or you can attend in person. We will be back at the Job Center in the upcoming month and you can sign up for any one of our core work three workshops. We do offer Accelerate Your Job Search where you can learn about trends in the labor market, how to be effective in your job search, and just learning overall tips and strategies to be successful and to organize and to document and to land your next job. Also, we offer your personal brand and resume. This is a good opportunity if you're a job seeker and you're needing to create or customize a resume. This is a good time to do so prior to doing your job search to add those recent certificates, add that recent um, skill or volunteer opportunity to your resume to showcase and highlight your skills. Also, we can assist you with creating a cover letter. We do offer resume workshops on Wednesday at one o'clock here at the Job Center. Feel free to come in. It's first come, first serve, so there's no appointment needed. Feel free to come in and get assistance with creating and customizing your resume with one of our job center staff. We also um, present the master the interview and preparing for that interview, whether it be in a virtual format or a traditional format, we'll teach you technology tips on how to prepare your camera, how to prepare your technology, and just overall general information about virtual interviews as well and how to be successful in your dress and being prepared for the interview as well. Also, we are on the move at Job Center. So we have been out in Lake County in these different areas, working at the North Chicago um, Public Library, Round Lake Catholic Charities, and also at Legacy Reentry and Zion Public Library. We offer outreach um, events in these particular locations to help job seekers with their career transition. We help them on site to create and customize a resume. Also, just if they wanted to connect uh, with funding from the WIOA grant that I previously mentioned, and they're looking to explore um, paid work experience or internships. So Job Center is on the move. Each of these um, locations, we do request that you do register and that we can assist you at these 
locations, oftentimes we find that it is just a little bit more convenient for job seekers to go to one of those locations versus coming downtown, but we are there giving you, providing you job center resources as well. Also at two of these locations, you'll notice there's a little asterisk there, Legacy Reentry Foundation and Zion Public Library. Typically there is an employer on site ready to hire. So please come dress for success and bring your resume for a potential opportunity. Last but not least, just wanna share ways that you can connect with the Job Center of Lake County. We are located at 1 North Genesee Street. We're on the corner of Washington and Genesee. As I stated before, our phones are available and open between 8.30 to 5. Four computers between 8.30 and 4, but we do close for one hour during the lunch between 12 and 1. There is no appointment needed to come in and use our computers for a self-directed job search. You can also visit us on lakecountyjobcenter.com. This is an opportunity for you to view our calendar of events. Feel free to register for any of those free events online. Also, maybe you're looking for job opportunities. Visit our Who's Hiring page to view job opportunities that are listed by industry. Also, we have additional information about resources that are available and our partners um, that we work with. Also, Stay up to date um, about the Job Center and, and upcoming events in the community by visiting us on our social media platforms. You can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Job Center of Lake County IL. One of our um, social media experts here, Ashanti Ross, usually posts information there multiple times a day. So this is a great opportunity for you to learn about job opportunities in Lake County, um, get tips and strategies on how to prepare for an interview, and even just tips and strategies on customizing resumes. So a lot of information on our social media platform, like and share. Next, we'll open it up for questions. And I'll turn it back over to Eva. Thank you for joining us.